Hey YouTube, it's Bianca and I'm back. And um, I just wanted to make a quick video about what's in my NECP binder. Um, I did this back in, I wanna say 2015, 2016. So the requirements and everything may be different. Um, when I went through NECP, you really didn't have to have a binder, but having a binder is good because it's basically your package. So the package that you send off to get accepted into the program um, is the same, um, it's, it's in the binder. So the binder was a, is a great idea to have if you're trying to get into the program. Like I said, I made this back in 2015-ish, um, give or take a year or so, I'm not sure. Um, but it should be about the same. Um, I've had friends write me asking for my hard copy of my binder, of my binder but however, um, because it's so big, I do not have the electronic copy. Um, however, I'm trying to give you guys everything that I have in here. Um, this binder is also good to have when you have to do your chief nurse interview. I know I heard now that the requirements consist of a video. Not sure about that, um, but as far as the binder and your interview and your package, I have it here. So I put my picture in front of my um, in front of my binder. You don't have to do all this. It can just be a black binder. Nonetheless, um, you know me. I like to spruce it up a little bit. So um, just you know, I have my rank. At the time, I was a senior airman. Um, yeah, uh, you know your unit, and then my base. I was at Keesler Air Force Base. So I'm gonna try to go through this fast, um, but not so fast where you guys can't get all of the information that you needed. But the first page is table of content. And before I get into this, I just want you to know that, excuse me, I want you guys to know that um, this binder is a great idea to have. And if you have somebody at your base that has a binder um, that went through the NECP program, check them out. Like I, and, and will forever be indebted to um, a nurse who came into my clinic when I was at Keesler and I was checking her daughter in. And um, this was before I even had a binder, before, you know, I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know this. I knew the steps, but I found her and she became my mentor and she did the program. And just by speaking to somebody and just interacting with them as you do your job, you never know who is you know who's going to be put in your life to help you out so she had a binder and she showed me how she labeled she uh, layered hers out and everything so i'm giving you my binder but at the end of the day or how i fix up my binder but at the end of the day your binder is your work so it's not like you know okay well i'm showing them everything and they're going to get in you know your eprs are in here your letter of acceptance so that's all your work i'm just showing you how to organize it so all right here we go so first page, NECP table of content. Mine had um, my biography, resume, um, which, and I put stars by them because you don't need to send that up with your packet. But when you do your nurse, chief nurse interview, you want her to, I wanted her to see everything. Like, hey, this is everything that I had. So number one, um, biography. Number two, resume. Number three, I put cover letter. Number four, letter of recommendation. Number five, letter letters of referral. Number six, um, waiver request. Number seven, personal essay. Um, number eight, Air Force Form 2030, which is the drug and alcohol abuse certificate. Number nine is the SURF. Um, number 10 is your EPRs. Number 11 is um, your medal narratives. Number 12 is your awards and decorations. Number 13 was your fitness report. Number 14 was your Air Force Form 422. Number 15 was your birth certificate. 16 was letters of acceptance from schools and the nursing program. Make sure you guys get both of those. Um, number 17 is um, Air Force ROTC IMT Form 48, and that's the form that um, basically you send to your um, ROTC detachment, letting them know exactly what courses you're going to be taking every you know, semester and they sign off on it, but you got to make sure you have that in here. Um, number 18 um, is nursing school tuition. When I went through, um, and I'm pretty sure I think it's the same, but don't quote me on it. It was, uh, I want to say no more than 15,000 a year, uh, but let me double check. Okay. Um, number 19, official transcripts. Number 20, um, degrees. Um, number 11, 
I'm sorry, number 20 degrees, number 21 letters of intent, and number 22 is the NECP checklist. So, and I also put at the bottom right here, you know, guys, if you can see this or not. At the bottom, I put starred items, or well, with the asterisk, items not required for completed NECP package. So make sure you guys just know that because you want your package to be perfect. You don't want them to have to go through everything and take things out. Like you just want to just be smooth sailing. Okay, so then I have a tab. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, I'm trying about this. I'm just, you know, trying to help you guys. My tab, and as we go through it, is my biography. So, and this is how my biography looked like. Um, like I said, I found a mentor that, you know, had a biography and I kind of just put my information where theirs was and just tried to make it, you know, as nice as possible and always get somebody to double check your work. Always. Okay. My next page was my resume. And if you, if you do, um, before we get to the resume, if you do have a back and front, like I did, just put it like behind it. Okay. Or however you want to do it. I'm just showing you my binder. Um, next is my resume. Um, and this resume was sent. This is not like the, the typical resume that you have um, applying for a job. This resume was more so. I'm going to cover this information because I'm not sure if it's personal or not. But it's just a resume that they sent out. Um, it may be different now. But yeah. And then I put my resume on here. So like this is a resume that looks like like for your job or something like your objectives, qualification, education, work history, stuff like that. And so I did that. Next is a cover letter. Cover letter is um, basically a cover letter for the NECP program. And it's basically um, you should get that whenever you start getting into the program, like getting into what you need for the program, there should be a template, a cover letter for you. If not, um, X around or X email the, NEC, the NECP program. I mean, if you have questions, what do I always tell you guys? X. So yeah, this cover letter was a template that was already like kind of, I think in the template documents in the, where you can find all the documents that you need. Letter of recommendation. Um, this letter of recommendation is basically signed by your flight chief and your superintendent and your commander. So for all those that have never seen a recommendation letter, um, yeah, this is, is long. And, you know, if you are in, you have all the signatures. Um, thing about this is, quick story, um, I tried to do the NECP, like you guys know, twice. I did not apply the first time, but I had this exact same binder. The only thing different about this binder is, um, I got accepted to more schools the following year and I had more experience under my belt. I had another award. So even though I didn't get in the first time with this exact same binder, my next year that I got in, my binder was even stronger and even better. But the only thing is my recommendation letters, everything had to change and I went to a completely new unit. I was in the um, pediatric clinic and I then moved up to the floor, the med surge unit as a med tech. So now my superintendent, my flight chief, everything has changed. And if you guys know anything about the military, trying to route up papers and route up things that get signed, it takes a while sometimes. So just be cautious about that. But if I can do it, you can do it. You have to just be hungry. You have to be hungry for these letters, you know, asking your flight. You have to be that uh, um, aggravating airman. I was, okay, is, is my letter ready? You know, go, hey. My old super uh, supervisors, they know me. Emma Wade is coming back. She must be looking for something. Is my paper ready? Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's move on. Um, letters of referral. So um, these are just letters from that I had from, I think I, I, uh, I got two letters from um, two nurses that I've worked or that I've known or worked with. And they just basically said, you know, they highly recommend me for the program. And these letters of referrals are not needed for the NECP package when I went through. But when you go through your chief nurse interview, you, uh, yeah, basically, she, well, my chief nurse, you know, wanted to, you, it's like an interview. You want to make sure other people know, like, or other people feel like you are qualified as well. Even though you may be qualified in your, in every, everything else, but they want to make sure you're qualified, you know, with other nurses or doctors or, supervisors that you work with so yeah 
So that that's what's, I'm uh, sorry, that was that. I get so tongue tied. Waiver request. So, waiver request. This is what a waiver request looks like um, or could look like. So basically, each school that you apply to have to send a waiver request because um, I did not take chemistry too. I, I, yeah, chemistry sucks and I don't like chemistry, but nonetheless, um, certain nursing programs don't require chemistry too. And especially if you're a second degree student, I already had my bachelor, so I came in to a lot of these programs as a second degree student, so they didn't require me to take chemistry too. So that's what a waiver request is. A waiver request basically states like, you know, this letter certifies, and this is from UNCG, and I have one from University of South Alabama, University of South Florida, and yeah, so those are the three schools that I was considering going to, and you just send them a letter, you know, you email them or call them, email and call, and let them know like, hey, you know, I need a waiver request stating that you guys don't need this for your program. They, if they are really, if they're a veteran friendly school, um, such as UNCG, uh, South Alabama, South Florida, they should know what NECP is and they should kind of already have like a template ready. So they'll put your name and it just says that chemistry two is not. So I'll read exactly one off. Um, this letter certifies that chem chemistry two is not required for second degree students in our bachelor's of science nursing program. As a second degree student, Bianca Denise, um, at the time it was Meadows, but now it's Wade, um, is not required to take chemistry two as prerequisite course prior to admission to our upper division program. And then they'll sign it, uh, and that's it. And so I made, I'm gonna make sure I put it in my binder. And you can get this usually um, a wet signature, meaning pen on paper. Um, and usually, I don't think NECP needed a wet signature. They just needed a signature. So I got these scanned email to me from the school. So, you know, wet signature, if you see this one, this one's from South Florida. If you see this one, um, it looks kind of like it's been scanned. Yeah, a wet signature would show up black or blue like they actually signed it. But I don't think NECP at that time um, needed that. Next is your personal essay. Um, and during my time, it was like, the question was, why do I want to be a nurse corps? Uh, sorry, nurse corps officer, not corps. Don't say that. Um, and you just kind of write what you, why do you want it to be a nurse? And I think you only had a 250 character um, limit. So yeah, that was kind of hard because that's spaces and everything. So this is kind of how mine looked. Um, and basically just be personal about it. Like, I spoke about like, you know, how my grandmother was a nurse and um, how, you know, I, I enlisted even with having a degree because I knew I wanted to be a nurse in school when I went to college, but I was already too far. Like I found out too late what I wanted to do and I was already too far in my degree. So I decided to enlist and then work my way up. Um, yeah, just talk about why you want to be a nurse corps officer. Um, I can't, I don't want to read you guys exactly what I wrote just for, you know, you don't, you just don't want to do that. So I just don't want to do, just because, you know, it should be personal. It should be about you. Um, and I always have somebody look over, double check, because I've had people look over this, like English majors or whoever that knew somebody that knew somebody and they'll write out something or they'll say, get personal or, or you know, take this out. Always get somebody to look over it. and it's it's your essay. You know, no one can tell you why you want to be a nurse or why you want to be a nurse in the in Air Force nurse corps officer. You know, nobody can tell you that but you. So even though I'm showing you all this, it's still your package. It's still, it's your stuff. Okay, so let's move on. Air Force Form 2030 and that's the drug um, and alcohol abuse is basically saying like, have you ever did drugs or participate in drugs now? You sign. And then you get somebody to sign it, put that in there. Your surf. Um, your surf is basically like everything. Like, and you can get this off of the virtual MPF. Um, your decorations, you know, your degrees, every place you work, like a student when you were in Fort like when I was at Fort Sam Houston, Keesler, have everything on there, like every time you upgrade in your upgrade train and stuff like that. And for all those that are um civilian that don't know exactly these upgrade training like the lingos that I'm using I do apologize um, this video is really um, dedicated to those that are like want to do NECP that don't have mentors at their base that haven't found a mentor that don't really know exactly how to navigate through the computer system this is really for them 
but you, you're so more than welcome to look at it as well. But like, so this is your surf. And if you don't know what your surf is, ask your supervisor. And my biggest thing is when you have downtime, if you have downtime, um, I know in the clinic, we had a little bit more downtime than on the floor. But if you're on a night shift, you may have more downtime than a daytime, a day shift person. Look up what a surf is. Look up what a jug form 2030. Have that stuff printed out, you know, and if you work on a unit, I'm pretty sure there's nurses that can help you. And if you don't have a hospital at your base, there's clinics. So there has to be a nurse somewhere. So find one. All right. EPRs. Um, that's your enlisted performance reports. Um, and that's just all your EPRs. And like you can even find those in your virtual NPF and print them out, put them in here. Your medal narrative. So I had an achievement medal um, at, during that time. I had one and that was for Honor Guard. You put that in here okay awards and decorations um that's basically you can get that from your virtual mpf you put that in there like all this stuff is basically you know and then um i put like my certificates like when i got promoted to staff sergeant or when i went below the zone um when i got the pisk and barger award you know i put all those certificates in here um diamond sharp you know just so your chief nurse can know like Hey, this girl is on her stuff like or this guy is on her his stuff like you know you put that in there you don't send that up but you put that in there fitness report um so yeah that's just your pt scores you put those in there um your air force form 422 422 so that's basically like you're just saying that you're qualified um mentally physically to um be in this program and to basically still be in the Air Force to be qualified for worldwide duty. Always gotta make sure you have your 422 even now. Getting ready to go off the kite, gotta have that. All right, birth certificate. Um, that's something that you will need to send up. Letters of acceptance. And like I said, y'all, when I first did this binder, I had no letters. I had a, a maybes or maybe, that's, when I first did my chief nurse interview, she said, I usually don't do interviews unless you have um, a cert, like a, not a con not a conditional a unconditional acceptance letter difference between a conditional and unconditional acceptance letter is um, conditional means on conditions that you pass this bio or ap you are in but if you don't pass then it's like necp is like well now we have to move on and we could have just picked somebody with an unconditional unconditional mean you got everything unconditionally you are accepted so my first time i didn't have any condi conditionals or unconditional i just had a you're, we're still waiting. We're still waiting. And I just knew that I was going to get into USF. And I was like, okay, yeah, chief nurse, I'm in. You know, I'm going to get in. I just haven't got my letter back. Didn't get in. The next year, UNCG, US, uh, University of South Alabama, US, uh, University of Southern Florida. So I just feel like it just wasn't my time. Like, wasn't my time. And that's okay. And for all those that got in and uh, that, or that wanted to get in that didn't, it's okay. Okay, I promise it seems like it's the end of the world, but it's okay. Is is I feel your pain, even though I didn't apply. I had everything to apply, but one letter. It's okay. You can do it. All right. So those are just your second acceptance letters. Then you have your Air Force IMT form 48, and that's basically this thing right here. It they look different every year. Every school may have or every detachment have different ones. Um, but it's basically, like I said, fall 2016, I'll be taking these. Spring 2017, I'll be taking these. All the way up until I graduate, this is my classes that I'm taking. And you usually follow them and you send one to your ROTC unit or you take it up there every year and they make sure that you're passing. Real simple, you guys. It seemed, it seemed hard trying to get this form more than when I got into NEC, when I got into school in NECP and my detachment. It was just like after my fall semester, I give my grades, my, my you know, my unofficial grades um, and my unofficial transcript to my commander. He checks it off. Okay, sign, sign. All right, and they keep a record of this and I also keep a record as well. Um, almost done, you guys. All right. So yeah, just I put every school Air Force form in here. So yeah, nursing school tuition. So um, yeah, you just print it off from their website, like the cost of the school. Um, usually military get in-state. So this is going to be like an in-state tuition. So um, you're good. And for UNCG, the total in-state was 14,896. Um, and if you take out the rooms, because they put rooms and meal on um, your meals on there. 
Um, so their tuition was six thousand seven hundred and thirty three during this time, this two thousand sixteen. So that's like way under, you know, what I needed, and that's a year, I believe. Yeah, I believe that's a year, and I think you your cap, I want to say was fifteen thousand a year, um, or maybe that's a semester. I'm not sure. Check check into it. Um, after you kind of got through this, like for me, I'm just kind of like, I think it's 15, but check into what it is now. Like it's, you never know. This was back in 2016 is now 2018, about to be 19. So check and see. Okay. Um, let's see. Then I have my official transcript and I put those in here. And of course we all know if you open the transcript, it's not official anymore. So, um, basically yeah, you have to send those officially to them, I believe, but double check on that. And then I put my CLEP scores um, from when I took a CLEP back in high school. I had to put that in there for English, a college English. And then my degrees, I put those in there. Just scan, uh, I just scanned them into the system um, and printed them off. And let me see if that's it. And then lastly, you have your letter of intent. And like I said, this stuff may have changed. This is what our letter of intent looked like. Uh, just saying like, I took this, what my grade was for it, um, what school I took it at, what degrees, what college I attended. This is all on the NECP website. So yeah, you'll have that. I'm just, you know, showing you what I have. NECP checklist. Um, and that's this right here basically like i said it may look different but this should be on the website as well and the reason why i'm not gonna like take pictures and like put them all up there is because i have personal information in here and um you never want to put your personal information all over the internet so i'm just kind of like showing y'all um i don't have personal information on this page but nonetheless you know uh yeah so this necp checklist should be on the website um and you should be good you get that signed by your um, unit training manager the person who does your cdc's upgrades and who gives you you know like your new cdc who checks you off on your training you give that to him and if you don't know what your you who your utm manager is x and honestly that's it and then at the back of this book i just put like during my time what the i printed this off um like different bases that we can go to um and like I said, you must maintain a 3.0 GPA in nursing school. Um, and it tells you what basis you can go to for your nurse transition program. And then your basis that you can go to for. Um, so y'all, I really hope this video helped whomever out. Feel free to share it. You know, if you're trying to get into NECP, use it. This is just a template. At the end of the day, you have to put in your work. You have to put in, you know, your time to get there. So I hope this helps y'all. Please subscribe, please like, please share, do whatever you want to do, but pass it forward. All right, thank you.